against some top fighters in the near future. And few fighters have more self-belief than Carlos Quadras. He's a great salesman, tremendous personality, believes very strongly in himself. Now Jerry Cantu, the referee, comes over one more time to make sure that everything is in order at ringside. Now it looks like we're ready to go. Quadras has the talent and the personality to be a star. He needs to refine his skill a little in order to match that talent and personality and to serve those things. And that's one of the reasons I think he's been trainer hopping. He starts out as an aggressor. Arroyo trying to start out with a tight envelope. Great punches. Quadras will go side to side a little more, throw wider shots, throw a greater variety of punches. We'll see which technique works better. Arroyo's been off for almost two years for various reasons. So it'll be interesting to see how he fares, especially early in this fight. He blames the boxing business. Says that he was ready to fight several times, but the matches simply didn't come off. Oh, that is hook. that he hasn't been active since the loss of Chocolatito. I'll tell you what, Arroyo's found a little home for that hook upstairs and that last counter hook. Uh, I, I think shook up. But the quadress is a free swinger. And as we saw in those highlights with Chocolatito, a really dialed in smart counter puncher can get to him. He's not just throwing to the head, but he's throwing to the body, which has definitely gotten Quadras' attention. He's, he, he, he so it's like that right body by Arroyo. Yes. So far, Quadras has been a sucker for that hook. This is Arroyo's first fight at 115 pounds. Maybe the new weight class can re-energize him to a certain degree. Coming up from 112. Break him! Break on your own. Break! And Arroyo said he was in the gym, believe it or not, for the full two years, sparring and all. So he may not be as rusty as we think he is tonight. Well, he says he's been through three camps, essentially, getting ready for last-minute cancellation fights. So that would suggest a fighter that won't be as rusty as his record indicates he might be. And Arroyo, of course, has the kind of great amateur career that tells you that if he's in the gym, he's doing quality work. He's not just in there to hang out. The difference between Quadras and fighters on his level, more or less, so far, the reason he's usually come out on top is his self-image and his imagination. He sees himself as a star and is resourceful and will figure out ways to win. But that's not happening so far in this fight. Big right hand from Arroyo, overhand right, that got Quadras' attention. And Arroyo knows it. Stop, 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 stop. But this round has looked very good for McWilliams Arroyo. And now Quadras is going to try to put a little punctuation on it. But once again, free swinging, opens himself up. Here's Carlos Quadras' wife, Sari Filofranco. And that is a mixed review, basically, as you can see on her face. And our producer, looking at her through the entire round from his vantage point in the truck, said she was not happy with what she saw in the first round. Well, her husband lost the first round and was shaken up at least once, maybe twice. Remember what I said? Get your, get your distance and get your angles, okay? Abel Sanchez is coming off a tremendous victory just a month ago in the cruiserweight division. His fighter, Marat Gassi, won what is so far the fight of the year for sure against the Cuban Dortico in a great fight. Great action fight. Here we see the overhand right from Arroyo that hits Quadras right behind the ear and he follows up with a left hook and he definitely got Quadras' attention with that. So there's no big smile on Quadras' face as he comes out for round number two. And McWilliams Arroyo coming off a nearly two-year layoffs is seen by our unofficial scorer Harold Letterman as the winner of the first round. Well, Arroyo's got a lot at stake in this fight. He's considered the B-side. He's considered the opponent here. The guy who's been a good contender, but not really championship caliber quite. And he has a real opportunity to take advantage 
of a fighter who so far he's found easy to hit in progress. Given that Sorung Bisai and Estrada are in the other fight, I wonder, I tend to wonder whether Quadras' attention was entirely on McWilliams Arroyo coming into tonight. Well, he said all the right things, Quadras, in the fighter meeting. He said, I know that Arroyo's been out two years. I know he doesn't have a, a whole lot of professional experience, he said, but I remember him from the amateurs, and he's got my respect and he's got my attention. But Arroyo is showing good for himself right now, especially with that two-year layoff. Bad news for Quadras, Andre, is now Arroyo's found a home for the right hand as well. He's really been able to it's nail Quadras upstairs with both hands. And I like what I'm seeing from Arroyo because he looks like he's coming here with the plan. Well, I think how what's really served him well is to stay in that tight envelope and throw when he wants to throw the way he wants to throw, while Quadras is winging shots and creating opportunities for him. Yeah, and that's always been Quadras' issue is his technique. It's not quite up to par with his talent. You can tell in a fighter's demeanor. You can look at his facial expression. You can look at his body language and tell if he's here for a check. If the moment is too big for him. Uh, or if he's here with the plan, like I just said, and he's determined to win. And I see that in Arroyo. I see a guy who comes in here, who has come in here with the plan, even when he gets hit, he doesn't panic, and he fires right back. And What's the plan, Andre? How would you describe it? We're watching the plan unfold right before us, but he looks like he knows what Quadras is going to do. He knows Quadras is a two-fisted fighter. He stays calm on defense when Quadras throws, and then he picks up where he left off with, to the body. And oh, right hand by Quadras over the top. Landed a big shot. Arroyo holding on because he was momentarily hurt. was awake already, and now they're even more so. And now we'll see from Arroyo, Jim. Andre said he sh you could see when a guy shows up for the check. Arroyo showed up for the chin check. He's checked Quadras' chin. Quadras has taken it, and now he's firing back. Now what does Arroyo have? How bad does he want it? And Arroyo has already reversed the momentum here with another big right hand, and Quadras gets in a left hook to end the round, and we've got a great fight brewing in the Forum in Los Angeles. Next Saturday, it's an intriguing light heavyweight doubleheader with big potential ramifications. First, hard-charging Dmitry Bivol attempts to show he's tops in the division against Sullivan Barrera. Then Sergey Kovalev aims to show he's still the crusher against Igor Mikhalkin. April 28 brings middleweight Daniel, J Daniel Jacobs back to his roots in Brooklyn, New York to face Macy Edge Zaleski of Poland. Also that night, undefeated heavyweight Jarrell Big Baby Miller also from Brooklyn faces Frenchman Johan Duabar. There's the crusher, along with his manager, Agus Klimas. Very aware of the cameras. Yes, Crutcher, we're looking at you. Looking forward to seeing you next Saturday night against Igor McCulkin. You guys are going out after the fight anywhere, Andre? You and, you and your best friend? Yeah, I, uh, somewhere on social media, Kovalev said he may want to do a Ward Kovalev 3, so we'll see. Oh, you were retired. Yeah, I am, but, but never say never. <laughs> I'm still a fighter at heart, Max. Stop, 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 Through stop, round two, no punch, no punch. jabs are not a factor in this fight. 45 of their combined 66 landed punches are power shots, and they are furious power shots. And now we start to see, Jim, if Arroyo can take the next step in his career, because Quadras is the more physically talented guy. He can get away with mistakes. He can change a fight with his power. And he has a big imagination and sees himself as a star. Can Arroyo fight through that and continue to have success? And it'll be interesting to see how Arroyo's conditioning holds up. It's one thing to be in the gym, hitting the bag, the speed bag, the mitts, and even sparring. It's something totally different to deal with the pressure of a big fight on HBO under the lights. That has the tendency to, to sap you of your energy very quickly, especially in a tough fight. The Royals had three professional losses. Does he let any of that doubt creep into his mentality and his self-view? And typical of the Puerto Rican boxing culture, you have seen that Arroyo has a sharp, disciplined left hook, and he can sweep it to the outside around Carlos Cuadras' right glove, or he can snap it to the inside, pass the glove onto the chin, as he's done several times. He's an educated fighter. Uppercut landed 
for Nick Williams Arroyo. Quadras is lost to Estrada. Oh, hard right hand by Quadras. Quadras is lost to Estrada. Estrada is the quality fighter that weathered the early storm and stuck with the game plan and saw himself as the winner and eventually won a close tough fight. And is now fighting in the main event tonight against the top dog in the division. And, and the style difference was very similar to what you're seeing here because Estrada was more the classic technique. Hands were a little bit quieter. Didn't have as much flash as Quadras, but over the long haul in the fight, that technique served him very well. Oh, Roy Quad looked off yeah. that right hand really well. Quadras landed a big overhand right to the to the chin of Arroyo, and he's looking for that same shot here in round three, and he just missed it on two or three occasions. Good jab from Quadras. Stop, 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 stop. Oh, there you go, there you go. Ten seconds, stop at the bell. Yes, it's over. Better look at money. But more often than he might want, when Quadra show, throws these big winging shots, his hands wind up in places where he has no defense when Arroyo prepares to counter. Very good. Train your legs. He's got nothing. You got nothing here, man. You're good. You're good. Perfect. Clean. Hey, let's talk. Okay. You know what I want? I want you to use that jab. If you use that jab, that bastard is not going to come in. Throw combinations and bend your torso, bend your waist, all right? Throw the shot right in, and you're not flexing. So then he throws and he catches you. And the right, huh? And use those legs. Use those legs so you can move and set all the punches, all right? That's what they're for. Deep breath. Very good, very good. Just be more effective. You're gonna burn him. Carlos Quadras listening to Abel Sanchez for the first time in his career, hoping to get the kind of corner advice that can turn the fight in his favor tonight. All right, we begin the fourth round. Let's go to our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. Harold, how do you have the first three? Okay, Jim, I got a two to one. 29-28, Carlos Quadras. You know, Jim, I, th I thought that McWilliams Arroyo hurt him, uh, outpunched him in the first round. I thought McWilliams Arroyo won the first round. But in the second round, with about 30 seconds to go, I thought McWilliams Arroyo was badly hurt from a Quadras right hand. And I think he landed that same right hand with about a minute to go in round three. So I got it two rounds to one, 29-28. Carlos Quadras. And that shows you the subjective nature of scoring. I totally agree with Harold's uh, assessment of the first two rounds and why Quadras won the second. But I thought Arroyo won the third because that right hand that Quadras landed in the third did not have nearly the same effect because Arroyo looked it off, meaning he turned his head with it. And otherwise, I thought Arroyo landed the more effective punches. But it was competitive, the third round. And I think that both rounds were not that easy to score. Uh, it could turn out to be a difficult uh, fight to score. And I think that Arroyo will improve his chances of winning it if he'll listen to his trainer, Anthony Otero, and work his jab. He's got to work his jab, Jim. But he's also got to get back to what gave him success early in this fight, which is body work. Now he's almost exclusively headhunting. And... Quadras is, is meeting him tip for tat right now. That happens so easily when you land a couple of good, hard head shots that rock the opponent. But it takes discipline to put money in the bank for the future. Arroyo has to get back to what gave him success early in this fight. Your fight against Kovalev, Andre, I thought would be a, a teaching fight in gyms across, you know, the boxing landscape where you hurt him upstairs and then finished him by refusing almost to throw anything except body punches. Because at the end of the day, I don't care who you are, don't like nobody it likes it to the body. That's, that's a great expression in box. He doesn't like it to the body. Who does? Who does? <laughs> <laughs> but it might not get you on the highlight reel. Well, the way I always express it to the layman, you know, to people who express that they don't know all that much about boxing, it's always surprising to them to hear that most fighters will tell you a well-placed, hard body shot hurts you more than getting hit to the head. 1,000%. Don't push the head down. 
but you ultimately get what you're looking for in the first place. If you want the big knockout or the headshot, it'll come easier if you invest in the body early on. But you got to trust the process. Well, this is a good fight. Mike Quadras will fight against Estrada. Unclear what the outcome will be, what the story of this fight really is. But there's some good action and some good drama so far. Here's Sri Saket Sorong Bisai, the man who has come more or less out of nowhere in the last couple of years to become the key figure in the 115-pound weight class and arguably one of the greatest fighters in the history of Thailand, potentially over the long haul, the greatest boxer in the history of Thailand. And Max Kellerman, take us through the Superfly divisional picture. Well, Sorong Bisai is the kingpin right now and Estrada is his number one challenger and is slightly favored going into this fight, by the way. Quadras has to win this fight today, tonight, right now. It's unclear that he will. Inoue is probably done with the division, but that's not official yet, and he's the most talented guy on this graphic. Yafai is a good, young, up-and-coming Brit, an Olympian, a real good amateur, and so far an undefeated and really good young pro. And, of course, Chocolatito is still going, even after that horrific knockout loss to Soaring Visai. Round five of a scheduled 10. This is a 10-round, not 12-round fight in the 115-pound weight class. Through round four, Quadras landing just three and a half body shots around after having in previous fights been at seven and a half per round. So Quadras throwing more upstairs tonight and landing more upstairs than has been the choice in previous bouts. Boy, Quadras just shook off a real good short left hook that I thought had him hurt, but he's not showing the effects. When a fighter can shake off a good shot like that, where you visibly see him hurt, shows you what type of shape he's in. Quadras, as well as the Royals, in some kind of shape tonight. Stop, stop, break on your own, break, break, there you go. We haven't even really mentioned that it's Mexico against Puerto Rico. I mean, it's only right. the, the most heated national rivalry in the history of Well, I think that has something to do with the way um, Arroyo is viewed. He's not viewed as, you know, a top of the division kind of guy. He's viewed as a middle of the division kind of guy. And maybe after tonight, that will change. He and his brother are a very interesting story. Two really excellent fighters out of Puerto Rico. His brother's had more professional success so far, but McWilliams can change that with a win tonight. Right hand body shot by Arroyo and Quadras answers with a right hand body shot of his own. Another reason why fighters get away from fighting inside and, and hitting to the body is because it takes a lot out of you. The guy who's good left hook from Quadras. It takes a lot out of you to be in the trenches, tussling, grappling, and then getting shots in between and all of that. That's why a lot of guys will will choose to stay outside and maybe pick and poke and try to box instead of being inside because it's not just hard for the guy that's taking the shots, but also for the one that's delivering them. Is that usually because he's also getting hit in order, you know, by taking those risks or just the work to punch on the inside is exhausting? It's both. Because what happens when you hit a guy to the body is you remind him that, oh, I can hit to the body as well. So he stabs you down low, you stab him, and then it turns into a war of attrition. That you usually see that, in fact, when one... Oh, good right hand by Arroyo. Big right hand from Arroyo. See what he can follow with. But Quadras shakes it off. Yeah, Two body. seconds left in the round. Quadras showing stamina. Arroyo intelligently goes to the body. These are some vicious shots on the inside. Yes, there are. And it's not just physical conditioning that's causing both guys to take these big shots. It's their mental. They made up their mind that they don't want to go anywhere tonight and they want to win this fight. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Whoa, that was some big stuff for both guys. This is another terrific round. Halfway through. Cinco de Mayo, it's the rematch we've all waited for as Canelo Alvarez faces Gennady Golovkin for the second time. Back in September, their first fight was judged a highly disputed draw. This time, both superstars are looking for a more definitive outcome, knowing both their legacies are on the line. Don't miss it. May 5, only on HBO Pay-Per-View. You know where we're at? You know what we're doing? This is your night. Come on, give us water. That's it. 
Both fighters tonight have been swinging for the fence fences, and here we see Quadros swing for the fences with a left hook, and Arroyo takes it well. Then we see Arroyo land an overhand right, and Quadros takes it well. Both fighters have taken vicious shots tonight. Both fighters are still standing. Both fighters are in tremendous shape. We've talked about body punching and the importance of using those opportunities when they're there. When a guy throws as freely as Carlos Quadras does, and he wings shots, he lifts his elbow up away from his body and gives the opponent chances, if they want to look for them, to sneak in under the arms, into the rib cage, where you can really test the opponent's will to continue going in the fight. In round five, Arroyo stepping it up tonight, throwing 73 punches per round after having averaged 50 around in his last three fights. Of course, he's had plenty of time to build up the energy, a nearly two-year layoff since the loss to Chocolatito. I'm really impressed thus far with Arroyo's conditioning because I've had the one-year and two-year layoffs. It doesn't matter how much you're in the gym. Again, a fight is different. So to see him fight this kind of fight at this pace is, is, is impressive to me, knowing what he's gone through over the last two years. Royal with a good left hook and an uppercut. That exchange. But I'm Quadras just seems to land and land and land, yes? When I say I don't know what the story of this fight is, what I'm waiting to see is if Quadras can convince Arroyo at any point, this is not your night. You're not supposed to win this fight. So far, he hasn't been able to do that. And I believe the burden is on Quadras more than it's on Arroyo, even though both guys want to win. Because? Quadras has more to lose. He just, he's just coming off of a loss in a close fight. Does he want to go through the same thing again and get pushed even further to the back of the yeah, line? It's a good point because against Chocolatito and Estrada, who were the two top guys of the weight area for years, if you lose very close competitive decisions, that's one thing. If you then follow that up by losing to a guy who's perceived as a middle-of-the-pack contender, Suddenly, your career is in much greater jeopardy. And a guy who's been off for two years. Quadras just fought. He's been active. So the burden is on him to come in here and dominate and show that he's still a force to be reckoned with. Arroyo momentarily in a southpaw stance there. Landed a straight left hand out of it, which is back to his conventional stance. I think Arroyo turned left-handed just to get a, get a bit of a breather. He's starting to breathe out of now the there he is. a little bit. Southpaw stance again. Right foot in front. This is something Quadras has been known to do from time to time in the past. Hasn't done it at all tonight. So far, Andre, you mentioned it. Both of their conditioning have paid off when one or the other has landed a huge shot. The other's just shaking it off and come right back. The question is, at some point in this fight, will someone land something that's not so easily shaken off? These next four rounds are going to be real interesting. Five. Williams Arroyo finished that round in a southpaw stance. We're still waiting for the main event between Trace Ketsor on B-side and Juan Francisco Estrada. There's Estrada from Hermosillo, Mexico. And you hear the Mexican music in his dressing room as he gets ready for the fight. You see a little grin on his face. It's a big event for him. 27 years old, 36 and two with 25 KOs. Started boxing at age nine, turned pro at age 18. Has won 10 in a row since the loss to Chocolatito several years back. Fourth fight now at 115 pounds, held two titles at 112. Had a tremendous comeback victory over Carlos Cuadras in a very close fight last summer. And a quiet night in Los Angeles, except here in the forum where it's Rock'em Sock'em Robot. Two fighters exchanging punches in, at a feverish pace here in the second of our three fights. Good left hook by Royal. Harold, how do you have it through six? Okay, Jim, I got it four rounds to two, 58-56, Carlos Cuadras. You know, Jim, I think that he's landing the, the cleaner, harder shots. I really believe that he's out punching a Royal. Uh, it's a good fight. You know, it's being fought mostly in the middle of the ring. They're standing there whacking each other. Not a lot of clinches at all. But uh, I just think that Quadras is getting 
you know, he's getting in a, uh, some better right hands than Arroyo's landing. I think Carlos Cuadras is more aggressive and landing harder right hands. Four rounds to two, Carlos Cuadras. You know, I'm not sure that that's the case. I'll take Harold's word for it. He's sitting here scoring, not just calling the fight. But there is something about Cuadras' presence when people talk about ring generalship. He has a certain kind of charisma where in close rounds, he just feels like the protagonist of the fight. And I think would tend to get those rounds. Because I don't know that he's landing the better punches here. I, I, I'm with you, Max, in the sense that I think it's probably A, a very close fight, and B, not the world's easiest fight to score. And, you know, even, even if Harold scored at eight rounds to two, I wouldn't be shocked to see some other judge with eight rounds to two, and I wouldn't say either one of them was, was necessarily Rick, wrong. Rick. It could be diametrically opposed. It's sort of a Cook's Choice fight. What do I like better? Yeah, it's very subjective, and I think it boils down to what these judges like to see because it's a very, very tight fight. If you're a fan of classic technique, you would score it for Arroyo. I'm a if, if you're a fan of spectacle, you might score it for Quadras. you got to ask yourself, who would you rather be throughout the round? You keep a tally of that, and you, can, you concentrate on who's doing more damage. And I think that's, that's what Harold was saying, basically, is he thinks that Quadras is landing bigger right hands and therefore doing more damage. Harold's an excellent judge, and... One of the best. I'll take his word for it. I see this as a very even fight. If you're Arroyo and even Quadras, when both fighters are a little tired on the back half of a 10-round fight, this is when you really want to go back to the body and test that other fighter's tank to see where he's at. So let's see which guy does. Take Andre Ward's advice and focus for a little while on the body. Arroyo has a lot of presence of mind in there tonight. He's now playing to the ringside group. He is. He's pressing himself with these combinations he's landing. Arroyo's been starved out for two years. He's hungry tonight. He wants to win. Up, cut over the right eye of McWilliams Arroyo. Little trickle of blood coming down the side of his face. And they'll go to work in his corner where the cut man is the trainer, Anthony Otero. You gotta take care of that guard, you gotta bring it up. Maybe you got him there. Bring your guards up. Okay. Willie, you keep it working like you're doing. You're dominating it, dominating it. Be more intensive, you can't wait, you can't stop. Bring your guard back. In the midst of a battle, it's a lot of little things that can happen that you can miss, like that right hand from Arroyo that definitely got the attention of Quadras as you see his legs do a funny dance. And Arroyo saw it too. I asked McWilliams Arroyo how the after effects of Hurricane Maria may have affected his training in Puerto Rico coming into the fight, and he said, everyone in Puerto Rico is struggling, but my training camp was excellent and worked very well. The only difference was I didn't drink as much water as has been the case in the past because no one in Puerto Rico can afford to in any way waste oh. water at this moment. Guys, I mean, it's hot. Quadras just took some crisp, hard shots upstairs. Looked like he could be on his way down and somehow shook it off and countered it with a big left hand that let Royo know I still could take you out of there. If either fighter can summon the strength, they could get some separation if they stayed consistent with their two-fisted attacks, but I think they're equal in terms of their fatigue level, so that's why we see the back and forth and the ebbs and flows. They're equal in just about every way. Round eight of a scheduled 10. Left hook by Quadras. Arroyo steps right forward from it. But that's what I mean about the story of the fight. When Quadras, by and large, has been more or less equal to his opponent, he's figured out usually ways to win. Arroyo has not yet done that. Can he do it tonight? But Arroyo knows that. He knows that's a narrative about him and his career. That's why I think we're seeing the determination that we're seeing from him right now. 
Would not want to be a judge in this fight. Would not rule out either fighter landing a big shot in this next these next two rounds because both fighters are looking for that home run shot. Quadras, the left hook, and Arroyo, the left hook. Neither fighter has ever scored a knockout past round eight. So the odds are we're going to the finish here. Although with two fatigued fighters who've been worn down by each other's hard shots and who are winning hard, one of them could change that tonight, although they've been concentrating more upstairs than down. In 44 seconds, there will be six minutes to go, and a lot of action could be packed into those six minutes. This fight is on the table, or so it would seem. Andre, is it too late for one of them to start concentrating on the body to soften the other up? Have they not put in enough work down there so far to make a difference? It's never too late to go to the body because one good shot go. placed in the right spot can, can end the fight, fight over. Southpaw stance again for William Arroyo. Is he doing that, Andre, just to give Quadras a slightly different look? I think he is. Initially, I thought he was trying to rest, but he seems to be effective when he turns left hand. Six minutes to go. Good, tough fight. April 18, the fight game premieres our first show of 2018. Join me, along with Max Kellerman and Bernard Hopkins, as we tackle some of the biggest stories in boxing. And by the way, Andre Ward made two brilliant appearances on our December TFG shows. And rest assured, that won't be the last time you'll see Andre Ward on TFG. One more time. Very well, very well. Well, that needs to work. It needs to work. Work the jab. And that left is also good, all right? Does the same purpose. But you got to be explosive with it. Explosive and careful when you come out. Carlos Cuadras is relatively pale skin, and therefore damage shows up on him a little bit more easily than, say, on McWilliams Arroyo, who has somewhat more olive toned skin. And uh, as you can see, Harold Letterman coming to the ninth round still has Cuadras ahead by two points on his scorecard, which is unofficial. But the back knee shows up on Cuadras as well, Jim. And modern sports fans get deeply suspicious when they see that. Well, we, we've never seen Carlos Quadras without the back knee. And boxing drug testing is, of course, making big strides within the past few years. But... Bada, which is the most respected testing service in the sport, did not test for this fight, though they did test for the main event Breaking tonight break. between Soren Bisai and Estrada. Yeah. Or they will be testing. If a fighter tests Ooh. clean with Bada, the assumption is the fighter is clean. That's right. We made that very clear on the fight game. Our belief in Vada, and Vada, of course, is the backbone of the WBC's clean boxing program. These are aggressive steps forward that some other sports haven't matched. Arroyo tried to sneak Quadras right there with a wide one-two, but he just missed the mark. Round nine looks a lot like its predecessors. Both fighters look a little bit tireder than what we've seen in the first seven or eight rounds. I think they both know that they're going to have to summon whatever reservoirs of strength they have for the 10th and final round. Somebody's going to leave the ring feeling like a hard luck fighter tonight. Yeah, with this type of fight, you hate to see either fighter lose. Well, you know, as we know, they don't have to. Their draws are possible. That is true. But um, 
that would not be, it would be a, a positive step in Arroyo's career, but not for Quadros, I don't think. Now Arroyo is staying in the Southpaw stance full time. So he chose to switch full time to the Southpaw stance within these past three rounds and make it a different look down the stretch for Quadras. Quadras, who had already landed a lot of significant right hands, has the option here of using the primary weapon against the Southpaw stance, the straight right hand. I think Quadras is saving his reserves for this last round. I think they respect each other. We saw Arroyo slapping Quadras on the butt with his glove as he walked past. It's very tight. It's very tight. We need this round. We need this round big. Throw punches. Throw punches and move your leg. Don't stretch with those punches. Move your legs and get in. Get close. Hey, you got to work that jab. That jab is the basis. Come on, can you do three minutes? Okay. Believe me, you heard him. Believe me, when you're doing your stuff, that's it. All you have to do is bring your hands up. I want your hands up. Be intelligent. You got it. You got to do a little bit of everything. Work hard. You got to win this damn round. It's been a while since we've seen Anthony Otero, Puerto Rican trainer for McWilliams Arroyo, but I like his work tonight. I think he has given his fighter intelligent advice throughout the fight. Carlos Cuadras, of course, is working with the most respected and recognized trainers in the world for the first time. Abel Sanchez. A couple of hard shots in there by Arroyo. Hard shots from both guys. You know, the, these are career-defining moments. This, what you're watching right now. Abel Sanchez asks Quadras to throw his jab. Quadras is winging power shots. There's the jab. professional fighters and if the crowd wasn't enthralled with the action that they saw leading up to Nietes' knockout of Rebecca in the preceding fight that's long forgotten now they've gotten more than their money's worth from this fight with another potential great one coming up they got their money's worth in Nietes fight too that was the sweet science and this is brutality and by the way the main event promises even more than this The one change that I've seen in Quadras being under the tutelage of his new team, Abel Sanchez, is more discipline. Offensively, he's still wide, he's still the same. That's probably the way he's gonna be for the rest of his career. But he's not showboating as much, and he seems to be more disciplined mentally. Who wants it the most right now? Oh, Last come on, Carlos, I like the showboat. <laughs> <laughs> Last minute of the fight, who wants it the most? Can Arroyo be more than just a good contender? And can Quadras regain championship form? Just a little grin on McWilliams Arroyo's face. Not necessarily to say that he's enjoying himself, but that he knows he's in a meaningful fight. And he's waited a long time for that. From Arroyo to the Absolutely. Quadras. And then got out of there so Quadras couldn't count him. Ben Sanchez said that Quadras needed this round. The hockey box numbers between the two of them in this round are almost dead even as they get ready for the last 15 seconds. But I see Arroyo outboxing Quadras. It's a tight fight. It's a tight fight no matter how you, how you slice it, it's tight. Well, as I said, Max, if you like technique, you might score for Arroyo. If you like spectacle, you might score for Quadras. There was plenty to appreciate from both fighters in the fight. Final CompuBox numbers in the 10th round, however, showed Quadras landing 10 out of 70, and Arroyo, who got in a little rally down the stretch, landed 18 out of 65. I thought Arroyo outboxed him. 
is certainly in the tenth round, if not throughout the fight. Well, that's only the tenth round that we're talking about. Now, Harold Letterman had it, a two-point lead for Quadras after eight rounds. Harold, where do you wind up after ten? Okay, Chip. I got it 95, 95. There you have it. Rounds of peace. I got it a draw. I thought that uh, McWilliams Arroyo won the last two rounds. I boxed him. You know, landed a few more punches. A little bit more aggressive. I thought he won the last two rounds. I got it a draw. I think it's a very even fight. All right, Harold, who are the official judges who have to make a very tough decision? Okay, Chip. The three official judges are uh, Tony Krebs. Um, he's from Oceanside, California. As a matter of fact, all the judges are from California. He worked two title fights. Um, he, he, uh, he judged 374 fights. He worked Saul Rodriguez uh, winning his split decision over Oscar Bravo. Uh, Pat Russell from La Mesa, California, judged 41 title fights, worked very often as a referee. He's worked 481 fights. Uh, he worked Lucas Matisse, uh, eight round uh, KO over Tiwa Kiram, which was on HBO. Uh, Fernando Valerial worked six title fights, not a lot of title fights, from Hispina, California. He worked 656, he judged 656 fights. He judged Jerwin in Cajas, TKO 10 over Israel Gonzalez. Uh, so three California judges, I think we should get a good decision. Now, as we wait for the very great Michael Buffer to perform capably as always, you will remember, boxing fans, that last summer, after a brilliant fight and a very close competition between Carlos Quadras and Juan Francisco Estrada, Michael had one momentary glitch and wound up basically announcing both fighters as the winner before he straightened it out. This one, I think, is going to be clearer and on target, but a tough decision. Let's go to the great Michael Buffer for the final result. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 great rounds of boxing, we go to the scorecards. This is for the vacant WBC Super Flyweight title, the Diamond Belt. Fernando Villarreal scores the belt 95-95. He has it even. Pat Russell, 98-92. Tony Krebs scores it, 97-93. The winner by majority decision, Thomas y Caballeros de Puerto Rico, McWilliams Arroyo. Good for those judges. Two the judges side. seeing that McWilliams Arroyo outboxed Cuadras in the closing rounds of the We're fight. We're so jaded in boxing, so cynical, the A-side.